but that changed in 1947. In that year, in the case of Everson versus Board of Education, the Supreme Court ruled in a five to four decision that under the First Amendment, neither a state nor the federal government could pass laws which aid one religion, aid all religions, or prefer one religion over another. For the first time in American history, the First Amendment was not only about the prohibition of establishing a national religion, it was also about not giving any encouragement to any religion. The modern strict separation view was born. And where did the five justices look for support for their argument? Not the Constitution, because there was nothing in the Constitution to help them, but to that one phrase Thomas Jefferson wrote back in 1802. For the record, the phrase separation of church and state actually was first used by the Supreme Court not in 1947, but in 1878 in the case Reynolds v. United States, where it was used by Chief Justice Morrison Waite, who was appointed by Republican President Ulysses S. Grant, specifically to explain why the religious could not use their convictions to violate federal law. Why did PragerU not mention this? Probably because that case revolved around a Mormon man who was trying to use his religious freedom to get around the laws against polygamy. Oh, and for those curious, yes, this was presented by the same John Eastman who wrote an op-ed for Newsweek arguing that Kamala Harris would not be eligible to serve as vice president because apparently she wasn't a U.S. citizen, which, for the record, is objectively wrong and the same John Eastman who wrote the Eastman memos where he basically said that Donald Trump could overturn a 2020 presidential election. Great presenters you got there, Prager you.